Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I want to talk with you about a subject that was inspired from uh, my last video, which had to do with the uh, cleaning of hoses. You can see uh, a link to it up here somewhere if you want to watch it. And uh, I'll, I'll put the link below as well. But in the uh, comments under that video, which by the way, I really enjoyed reading all the comments and, uh, and some folks got into some interesting discussions. Uh, in particular about um, where is the beneficial bacteria and if beneficial bacteria actually exists inside of the hoses. So when you clean those hoses, are you actually eliminating beneficial bacteria? So um, I just wanted to comment on that and uh, talk a little bit about that. And I certainly want to hear your comments. Uh, for those of you that are, are part of my uh, conversation gang, the convo gang, <laughs> <laughs> Hit that bell so you're part of the conversation gang and uh, let's talk a little bit about where is beneficial bacteria and uh, in the tank behind me uh, the truth is is that there is a tremendous amount of beneficial bacteria in the substrate that is a crushed a crushed shell um, you know a coral substrate that is made up of crushed coral and shells and um, all of that is growing bacteria. There is also a tremendous amount of bacteria, of course, in the, um, in the sump, in all of that media that I have filling up that first chamber of the sump. So um, you have perhaps more, more surface area than you could possibly need or that, or that the waste being produced in this tank could possibly feed. And by that, what I mean is, you're only gonna have as much beneficial bacteria as your tank can, can support. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're running uh, 25 canisters or five sumps, you're only gonna grow the amount of beneficial bacteria that can be fed by the ammonia that is uh, feeding that particular kind of bacteria that then turns that ammonia to nitrite and then ultimately to nitrate. So um, whether that's spread out over, over two, two sumps and five canisters or whether it's all uh, uh, on the decor and on the substrate, you're only gonna have what you have. Now in the tank behind me, because there is so much surface area, um, it can be pretty forgiving. In other words, I can, um, I can take the uh, Sun Sun 704B, which is only being used for, uh, for mechanical filtration. It's just stuffed with sponges, okay, with coarse at the bottom and then medium and then fine at the top, uh, as recommended by Pongaroo in some of his, uh, in some of his uh, videos. But um, I can take that, that, those sponges and rinse them in, in uh, tap water. I don't care if I kill the bacteria in those sponges because I have so much, so much uh, beneficial bacteria surfaces in this tank. Uh, you have the decor, you have the substrate, you have the plants, you have the inside outside walls of the overflow box. You have the, uh, the background and the space between the background and the back wall of the tank. All of that is uh, hosting beneficial bacteria. Now, when you go in the sump, and you see uh, all of the media, as well as those Brightwell uh, NO3 cubes that you see in there uh, that are infused, I believe, with sulfur to help reduce nitrates um, and everything else I have going on in there. Um, I, could, I could probably wash all of the media in the sump <laughs> in tap water. And, uh, and because of the um, amount of substrate and other surface area, I probably would be okay. And that is one of the big advantages of a uh, large tank in that it can be very forgiving in things like that, uh, which I wouldn't do by the way, and I don't suggest or recommend that you do it. Now, uh, if we take a look at something like the, um, like the 60 gallon, okay, let's look at the 60 gallon. Um, here I have two canister filters. I, ha I have a hang on back, uh, Marineland, um, a hang on back, an Emperor 400, I believe it's called, 
uh, dual bio wheel filter that uh, has inside of it, um, it has uh, some plastic sponge filled balls and, uh, it, it, and so it, it, it has beneficial bacteria between the, the spinning wheels and the balls. I also have all of the lava rock the, um, and the, I believe it's called uh, Dragonstone or Wonderstone or whatever that red, the red stones are called and all of the crushed coral substrate. All of that is, is covered in beneficial bacteria as well as the plants and the back wall of the tank which I don't really clean and uh, you know because it's black it doesn't really show anything so all these surface areas are covered so this tank the 60 is very very forgiving it's a very very forgiving tank and I could actually uh, take uh, I'd be willing to, to, to bet that I could take both canisters on that tank wash them I entirely in tap water again I don't recommend that I wash the media that's inside of it bio home and marine pure which I have in those canisters I wash it in I, I rinse them in tank water however if I did it all in tap water there is so much additional uh, surface area between the HOB and all of the uh, substrate the rocks and everything else that I probably could get away with it okay and not have a, a, a tank crash because of an ammonia spike interestingly enough the uh, the tank that is probably the most delicate in that area uh, is going to be the 100 because the 100 gallon only has an fx6 on it and fx6s are notorious for not having a tremendous amount of uh, biomedia capacity of course i have a lot of sand and that sand does harbor beneficial bacteria and all of the plants that you see in the 100 are there for two purposes those plastic plants are there for two purposes one to be a home for beneficial bacteria which will grow on those plastic plants and two to provide tight spots where the um where the clown the clown uh loaches can actually get to food that the other fish can't get to and and uh, the synodontist cats can also get to food so those plants have a purpose in that tank not just it's not just aesthetics and color so uh, so that ecosystem is probably a little bit more sensitive and I would most definitely clean uh, you know clean any of the biological media in tank water I would never risk using uh, tap water in that tank because it is it doesn't have the redundancy or the backup that these other tanks have and of course you have very very a, a very very sensitive system would be the uh, the 30 gallon uh, or 29 gallon uh, quarantine tank where I only have an old whisper 30 there's like an old whisper 30 on there that's been running for like I don't know <laughs> like six years non-stop and uh, and uh, and the substrate and that's it so if I were to take uh, the sponge there's a bio sponge in that whisper 30 and 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 another and, and a mechanical sponge if I, was to, if I was to take both of those out and clean them in tank water um, there's a chance I'd have a problem I'd have a spike however uh, there is a lot of uh, biological bacteria in the substrate of the 60 and uh, again that's that's something you'll see in this kind of a coarse substrate that has a lot of room where things can fall in between uh, it's a little bit of a pain because it's true that detritus and waste can get into it but at the same time it's that detritus it's that waste that feeds bacteria so um, i have no doubt a lot of beneficial bacteria in the crushed coral of the 29 gallon uh, but that would be probably my apart from the 100 probably the the biggest candidate for an ammonia spike if i over cleaned if i if i tried to clean things so thoroughly that i killed all the bacteria so uh so where is the beneficial bacteria the answer is is that it's everywhere and you don't need the beneficial uh if beneficial bacteria in fact is growing in your hoses i assure you you don't need that beneficial bacteria why because so many other surfaces are doing the job your substrate your decor your rocks your plants your backgrounds in my case the space between the background and the back of the tank uh, and of course the large sump I have on this tank and the uh, all of that is providing a home for beneficial bacteria so it is everywhere so um, use common sense 
think about it in terms of um, sort of a broad spectrum. If you have a small tank with uh, you know one sponge and no substrate and you do a thorough cleaning, you're gonna kill your fish. And by thorough cleaning, I mean you wash everything in tap water, you scrape all the walls, you clean, you vacuum what's on the bottom. You're gonna have a crash. You're gonna re restart the nitrogen cycle. And uh, as a result, the ammonia and nitrite will kill your fish. However, however, if you have a big system and with a lot of surface area, you can clean more aggressively in certain parts of it and you're gonna be okay because all the uh, additional area is going to uh, is going to cover you is going to provide you with enough bacteria to handle what it is that's going on i mean there's some products like marine pure and brightwell um, there's a brightwell block i'm thinking of getting it's a sulfur infused uh, block that's supposed to reduce uh, uh, nitrogen but uh, th this block has like a thousand square miles of uh, beneficial, where, where bacteria can grow. Um, do we need a thousand square miles? <laughs> I don't know. I could put I could put ten blocks in the sump, and I'd have more more surface area than, than there is in Lake Malawi. <laughs> anyway, how much of this is needed? Uh, how much is being actually handled by the substrate and the decor and the plants? How much of it is marketing hype? Post your comments below. Let me know. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on where the beneficial bacteria is and uh, your thoughts about the different kinds of bacteria. And, uh, and let's get a good conversation going in the comments below. I'm counting on you, my conversation gang. <laughs> And yes, I did steal that idea from Evan, Evan Alexander, IFG, the legend, Evan Alexander, <laughs> who's probably going to be over 50,000 subs pretty soon. So that's a pretty amazing. A shout out to Evan for the wonderful job he's doing. Okay, so there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to uh, rate and comment and hit that, hit that bell. And uh, that's all I got. Thank you so much. Well, of course it's got a fish on it. <laughs>